morning. Find your comfortable seat, root through your sit bones. And I want you to, um, instead of just moving your upper body and feeling, you know, like a, a top where you got your lower body, I want you to actually like lift your hip up and down using your muscles, lift them up and down. And I want you to round your bottom by squeezing your butt and then arch it forward, round it, and then come forward on your sit bones. You're not using the upper body so much. You're using the hip joints, the muscles around the hip. Squeeze your butt cheek and lift one hip and alternate and squeeze the other. And then just kind of go in a circle down in the hip joint. So you squeeze one cheek, come forward on your sit bones, squeeze the other cheek, and then go to the back on your sit bones. Just kind of do a little circle down below and go both directions. It might feel weird and that's kind of the point. Wiggle back and forth. And then settle, lengthen through your crown. Draw your pelvic floor up slightly. Why is my music not going? I don't hear any music. Let me hit the button one more time. Settle why I work on the music. There we go. Third time is hitting the button's a charm. And we're back. So we were settling, we were lengthening. We're drawing up through our pelvic floor slightly. I want you to pay attention to your breath as it pertains to the pelvic floor, the abdomen, and the diaphragm. If you contract your abdomen and hold it like you're ready to catch a ball and breathe. Your breathing becomes a little constricted. It becomes more of an upper chest breath. When you take a deep breath, you, your diaphragm can't really press down into your abs. So keeping your core contracted. No tilt in the pelvis, just a contraction. And feel how shallow it makes your breath. Try and take a deep breath without releasing that contraction. And feel how it kind of gets stuck right under your rib cage. It won't go down further. And then relax your abdomen. Take a big breath, feel how your belly balloons out. Your diaphragm is able to push down into your organs. Thus the belly pushing forward, making space. And I want you to breathe a deep breath in, keep the belly ballooned out and exhale without drawing the belly in a lot, without allowing it to come back inward. It feels like you can't quite get all the breath out without kind of hunching through your shoulders. Try and release as much air as you can without utilizing any belly. couple more of those breaths. Notice how when the belly is pressed outward and you try and exhale all the air, you can't really utilize your pelvic floor muscles to help press air upwards and out. We just let all of the belly relax, pelvic floor relax. Lengthen through the crown without engaging anything through your abs. Allow yourself to take nice deep belly breaths, bellowing out the belly. Exhaling, drawing the belly in and slightly up. Pulls the pelvic floor up as well. Inhale, open wide. Exhale, breathe. 
pull it in, pelvic floor lifts. Inhale, open. You might wonder what this has to do with hip mobility, but the pelvic floor is part of the pelvic, the hips. The easiest way to work the pelvic floor without utilizing any leg motion, without feeling like you're doing sit-ups, without putting the back in a compromising position. Big breaths. Letting the belly expand without arching the back and drawing the belly in. Let the pelvic floor pull up with it. They all kind of pull up together. Do a couple on your own. And relax, bring the head forward. Let the head drop. Flex your right foot and lift your lower leg. Let the head drop, feel a stretch all the way through the fascia, the back of the leg, the hip. You may feel it in the low back. More on the right than the left. Bring the leg down. Left side, flex the foot and lift. And release. Right ear over to right shoulder. And I want you to kiss the right lowest rib towards the right hip. So you're leaning over further. Keep letting that head hang over to the right. Stabilizing through the core, bring the right rib cage up off the right hip. Keep the ear to the right, tuck your chin and roll to the center, nice and slow. Take a breath at center. Roll the head over to the left side. Then kiss the lower left rib to the left hip. Your head hang, relax through your neck. Your head gets a little heavier when we're kissing over to the side. Try not to engage those neck muscles, the back muscles, chest. Release the rib cage and the hip, lengthening through the spine again. Tuck the chin and roll to center. Lift the chin up to the ceiling. Take a big belly breath. Exhale, draw the belly in. Pelvic floor lifts, diaphragm lifts. Feel yourself lengthen a little bit more. Stay lifted and lengthened and drop the chin down all the way into the chest. Try and relax the glutes, back of the thighs. Lift the chin back up. Lengthen through the core. Bring the chin back down, stay tall. Resist the urge to collapse down. Bring your head back to neutral. Relax your posture. You can roll, you can twist, roll your shoulders, roll your head, twist, whatever feels good. 
arch and contract your spine. While we're seated, we're going to do some rotation <clears throat> of the core, locking our legs in place. So the knees are facing forward, toes are facing forward. I want to have your hands like you're gonna do a push up, So they're right there next to your shoulders. And you're going to cross the left one over to the right side. Feel the rotation. Keep both legs rooted, both sit bones rooted. Breathe. And rotate back, draw that hand back. Left side, rotate across, reach to that corner with your stop sign hand. Keep lengthening through your spine. Keep your knees facing forward and come back. Rotating through the core and using the muscles in our thighs and our hips to stabilize and root. Left side again, reach your right hand across to the left side. And bring it back. Face forward, left one across over to the right. Breath. And bring it back. Release your hands down. Shake out your wrists. I want you to cut either. If you have arms on the side of your chair, you're going to have to turn to the side. If you don't, you can just scooch to the right and let your right knee hang off, okay? Right knee's gonna hang off. You can be on your toes back there on your right foot. I'll turn to the side so you can kind of see it better. Just like we do when we're one cheek on and one cheek off. So you're gonna use your left hand to hold on to the seat of the chair or the back of the chair or whatever you have on this left side you can hold on to. And you're gonna bring your right hand right back up like we had it in that push up position pretending to push up. Relax your glute for a moment. Make sure that your knee is under your shoulder, not necessarily under the hip, but under the shoulder. Lengthen through the crown, draw the pelvic floor up, deep breath. On your exhale, stabilize, squeeze the glute, squeeze through the thigh, press across to the left side. Hold and breathe. Come back. Bring the leg out in front of you. I'll switch back to this direction. Still hanging off. We're still hanging off. Hold on to the, to the side. Lengthen tall. And at the push up position, deep breath. Exhale and push across. Draw the belly in. Feel the stretch. Allow your hip to drop down away from that shoulder. So you're dropping your butt cheek down further. Breathe. And come back. Bring your knee up. We're gonna switch our foot in. We're gonna switch to the other side. So scooch or rotate, whichever you were utilizing before. Drop your knee down first. Up on your toes, it's gonna to help with your stabilization. Hold on with your right hand. Lengthen tall, make sure your shoulder and your knee are lined up, not necessarily the hip. Lengthen. Left arm up to push up position, deep breath. Exhale, push across to the right. Not leaning right. We're just rotating the spine, stabilizing through the hip joint, using the abs, using the hip flexor. Squeeze the butt, breathe. And come back. Take the leg out in front of you. 
toes facing upward. Deep breath. Exhale, push across. And then let that hip drop down past the level of the chair. Opening up the space between the rib cage and the hip bone. And back up, bring your leg in, scoot yourself back onto the center of your chair. Roll, twist, whatever feels good. Any of that good stuff. Lengthen through the crown. Have yourself a little bit away from the chair. You can have full, full butt on the chair. We're just not gonna be, have our touching the back of the chair really. Coming forward, knees forward, toes forward. We're gonna round our shoulders, draw the belly in like you're scooping the belly out like ice cream. Round the shoulder forward, drop the head. Now keep the belly scooped in like ice cream and lift the shoulders and head back up to neutral. Lift the heart up, keep the belly scooped in. Head back, heart up. Big breath. Bring the head down, heart back to neutral. Round the shoulders forward, re-scoop the belly. Keep the belly scoop, return the shoulders to neutral. Then start to lift the heart and head. Keep the belly scoop. And one more scoop forward, round the back, scoop the belly in. Keep the scoop, bring the shoulders back to neutral, head back to neutral, lift the heart, head up. And back to center, roll or twist. What can, keeping that scoop did was we were keeping we were keeping the pelvic from uh, rotating forward and back, doing an anterior or posterior pelvic tilt. Keeping that scoop made the, made the pelvis stay in place as we moved and stretched through the upper body. All right, we're gonna stand and we're going to do some more good stuff. Have a chair nearby. We're gonna hold to the back of the chair first. Standing on, I have left leg, left chair on the left side. If you're doing the opposite, then you just have to switch next time. Standing on the left leg, lengthen through the crown, lift up through the whole body, find a nice long. My toes are on the ground on the right side, but all my weight is really on the left side. You know, bring your toes forward and they can touch or not. It's totally up to you. And you're gonna make a half circle around to the back without moving the rest of your body. It's just in the hip, rotate it around to the front. So you can glide your toe along the floor or you can have it just off the floor if your floor is not glide friendly. Try not to move the rest of your body. Utilizing your abdomen and your core stabilizers. Going back and forth at your own pace. And then I want you to hold it in the back on your next back. I have my right foot back, right hand is in the push up position. Deep breath, lengthen through crown. Exhale across over to the left side. Breathe. Inhale, bring your arm up. Rotating forward, exhale down. Relax your legs, shake them out. We're gonna switch sides with your chair. 
or turn around, whichever. Weight is on my right foot, holding on. I'm not holding on to the death grip, but I'm definitely making sure it keeps my stability. <clears throat> Before you put your left foot in position, lengthen through crown. Feel as if you're pulling through your joints and lengthening, putting space between every joint and bring your left toe forward. It can touch the ground. Slide along the back. Slide back along the front. Try not to move the rest of your body. Engage through your core to keep the stability. You're gonna feel the rest of the body want to go a little wonky as you're moving. Try not to let it. On your next backwards, hold in the back. Bring the left hand up. Your toes can be on the mat or not, it's up to you. Deep breath, lengthen. Exhale, push across to the other side. You exhale, draw that belly in. Breathe, feel core stabilization, feel your body heats up when you're using these big muscles or maybe my body's just heating up. Who knows? Big breath up, exhale down and relax. Shake it out. You're going to bring the chair in front of you. We're gonna put one foot on it. I've got mine to the side so that you can see, but you can definitely flip it the other way. We're going to, let's start with, since I have this on this side, let's start with left foot. Left foot straight up, knee in front of you. Lengthen through the right leg, micro bend in the knee so you're not locking it. Hands either on your hips or you can put one on the back of the chair if you want to for to help with stability, deep breath. Exhale, chest comes forward and you're gonna come right over the top of that knee. Hips kind of slide backwards. Don't let the knee go into your armpit. Don't let it fall in between your chest. Lengthen through the crown, press the sit bones back. Breathe, look at your toes so you're not arching your neck upward. Right hand next to left foot. So if you happen to be on your right foot, make sure that you put your left hand down. It's opposite arm and leg near each other. Deep breath, exhale, rotate to the left. You can take your elbow back. Turn your head, breathe. And come back forward. And now as you come back forward, go ahead and slide that knee into your armpit off to the side of your body. If you need to come up and kind of move stuff over, that's okay. But lengthen, butt back, head forward. Coming into the inside, just barely into the inside. So you feel it touching along the side of your body. You feel yourself touching the interior of your thigh. Lengthen through your crown, deep breath. Exhale, round your shoulders and drop your head. Lengthen up, flatten your back. Stay up nice and flat. Now we're gonna bring this knee, we're gonna leave the knee in spot, but we're gonna move our other leg to turn at a 45 degree. Open that hip up a little bit more. Deep breath. Exhale, round your shoulders, drop your head. Flatten your back first, pull your belly in and slowly come up, squeeze your butt. 
and release your leg. Shake it out. We're going to switch sides. I'm going to move my back of my chair to the other side. And I'm going to bring my right leg up right in front of my hip joint, facing forward. Hands either on your hips so you can put one on the back of the chair if you want. Deep breath. Exhale, hip slide back, chest comes forward and you lay right over that knee. Lengthen through the crown. Imagine that the sit bone and the crown of the head are pulling themselves in opposite directions to keep the spine long and to keep space in the hip. Bringing the left hand down next to the right foot. Deep breath and lengthen. You can be on fingertips, knuckles, palm, whatever you can reach or put a block there or a book or something so that it comes up higher. Deep breath and lengthen, exhale and open. Slowly come back down. As you come down, let that knee slide to the outside. You need to come up and move stuff around, give it space, and then hug it in. Lengthen through the crown, opposite of the sit bone, deep breath. Exhale, round the shoulders, drop the head. Your knees are both still facing forward, hip width apart. You just scooched your, your upper, your torso off to the side, just a tad. Coming back up, just flatten your back first, lengthen. Take your supporting leg and just rotate it out about 45 degrees, rotate your toes out. Bring your core, your torso over, deep breath, lengthen. Exhale, round your shoulders, drop your head. Lift your head and shoulders to flatten your back first. Squeeze your butt, come up nice and tall. And relax your leg. Shake it out. Good stuff. All right, I'm going to move my chair off to the side. We're going to come, let's go, let's see. Let's go ahead and go down to the floor. Run down to the floor, sitting up. Feet in front of us, but knees up. We kind of did some of this before. Tall spine, bring the hands behind you. And you're just gonna rotate your knees side to side. So you want to have your legs quite a ways open, 45 degrees, and just rotate through your hips. Imagine getting your knee, the inside of your knee to touch. We're relying on our arms for some stability. If you feel like you're ready to try it with core stability, you can try and sit up tall without you leaning back on your arms, pulling your belly in, trying not to round your back. Not great at not rounding my back yet, but we're working towards it. Inside of the thigh, knee touches, lifting the hip up and ro rolling forward slightly. You can even release the back arm if you want to and face the knee that's hitting the floor on the outside. Just making them get a little bit bigger. We're gonna go all the way over to the right. 
and pause. Make sure that you have a 45 degree angle in both knee or 90 degree angle in both knees. Lengthen through your crown. You're gonna feel like you're sitting on your right cheek more, upper hip, outer hip. Breathe. If you need support, touching the floor on your back leg is not comfortable. You can put a blanket or block or pillow underneath. You may not be touching on the outside of your right leg. You can also put some things for support. This is the kind of support that seems to feel better to me. Makes me, helps me sit up taller. The goal is to sit up taller. So find a support mechanism that helps you sit up taller. Lengthen through your crown. Just feel the posture in your body for a moment. Then I want you to walk your hands forward. And that may mean you also have to release some of your support mechanisms, your blankets or blocks or whatever. Tall spine, breathe into the hip. Try and relax this back leg back here as much as you can. And I want you to walk your hands over to the right. Walk your hands back, facing forward. And walk your hands to come up tall. Lean back and let's rock side to side again. If you're gonna need a support mechanism on the left side, you want, want, want to move it over. and then come all the way over to the left side. Make sure your right leg is at 90 degrees, your left leg is at 90 degrees. Your torso is right in the center of your thighs. You're not really twisting to face the thigh of your left leg. You're right in the center. So find something if you need support under the outside of the left leg or the inside of the right leg or both. You might need both, and that's okay. Sit with that posture for a moment and breathe. Deep breath, lengthen through the crown. Exhale, walk it forward. As far as you can and maintain a tall, long spine. You can get some outer thigh T-band stretch on the left outer thigh. Walk your hands left over that left knee. Trying to relax the right leg. Walk your hands back facing forward. And then walk your hands back up all the way up, lean back and rock side to side. We're gonna roll all the way onto the floor next. So situate yourself on your mat so you can roll back. Knees are up, arms to the side. And I want you to do pelvic floor tilts. So you're tilting your pelvis forward and back, flattening it, lifting your back, flattening your back to the mat and lifting it off the mat. Some uh, dynamic movement in the pelvis. And then I want you to hold the pelvis at neutral. So you still have a small, um, the small of your back is still off the floor slightly. And I want you to root through the right leg or the left 
sole of the left foot, root it to the ground, and I want you to slide your right heel out. without letting that pelvis tilt. The further out you go with that leg, you'll feel your pelvis want to tilt up to the ceiling and make a more big arch in your back. Don't let that arch happen. And then draw your knee in, sliding your heel, and don't let your pelvis tilt. Now it wants to tilt into the floor as you draw the knee in. Don't let it do that. Stay neutral. Slide the right heel out. Don't let the pelvis tilt. Slide, slide it in. Slide it out. Slide it in. Now root through the right sole of your foot and let's do the left side. Keep your pelvis at neutral. Slide it out. And slide it in. Slide it out. Slide it in. Out and in. And relax and pause. Kind of roll to hip to hip. Moving your knees side to side. Just releasing any tension in the low back. Releasing the belly. We're going to do another one. We're resisting the tilt of the pelvis. So go ahead and do it manually. I want you to tilt your pelvis forward and back, push your back into the floor and lift it off to remember what it feels like for it to tilt. And then I want you to bring it to neutral, which means there is no motion. There's no engagement of anything. In order to maintain that, you kind of have to engage your belly a little bit and you're going to lift the right sole of the foot off the floor. Then you're going to straighten the leg pressing through the heel and then bringing it back in. The leg never touches the floor. Straighten it out, bring it back in. Bring the knee into the chest. Don't let the pelvic floor tilt. Straighten out, push through the heel. Bring the knee into the chest without tilting. Once it starts to feel like it's going to tilt, stop. Don't go that far. Straighten out and bring it back in. Straighten out. Bring it back in and go ahead and put the foot on the floor, left side. Root through the right side. Lift the left sole off the floor. Press the flexed foot out. Draw the knee into the chest. Press it out, draw the knee into the chest. Press it out, draw it into the chest. Press it out, draw it in. One more, press out. When you draw it in, go ahead and put your foot flat back on the floor and then relax. Rock side to side on your hips. Draw the right knee up, run the hand down the shin, opening the knee to the outside. Take the hand either to the ankle, the instep of the foot, the outside edge of the foot, the toes, whatever feels attainable. If you have to lift your shoulder up to reach it, but it still feels attainable because you can press your shoulder back down and lengthen, then that's fine. Open the knee to the outside. Bring the heel in right over your crotch or right over your belly. Bring it to the inside, knee to the outside. And then draw the knee in close to your elbow. Knee out and knee in. Knee out and knee in. Flex your foot and lift to ceiling, half of the happy baby. And I want you to draw the knee inward towards your armpit and then take it out further. Almost like you're trying to touch the floor out there, but don't force it. Bring the knee in, 
take the knee out. Bring the knee in, take the knee out. Find your comfortable spot that you can sit there for a moment. Bend the knee, release the foot, take it all the way to the floor. Other side, bring the left knee up, run the hand down the shin, find the comfortable position, make sure the shoulder stays down and the lift spine is lengthened. Draw the knee into the elbow and then open it out, drawing the foot inward. And out, into the elbow and out. In and out. I'm saying in and out with my knee, but obviously the foot's doing the opposite. When I say in with the knee, the foot goes out as far as it can with my me holding on to it. Find your neutral, take your foot to the ceiling. And then draw the knee inward towards your armpit and then outward. This is gonna be a lot smaller of a motion and it may not be completely attainable as well. It might be teeny tiny depending on the mobility of the joint. It's more about the muscle activation than trying to make your joint do something it's not meant to do. Find your comfortable position that you can hold for a moment, lengthen through the spine. Breathe, bring the foot down, release the foot all the way to the floor. And rock side to side on the hips, knees go side to side. Mm -hmm. Straighten the right leg out, lift the arms overhead. Lengthen in opposite directions, keeping the pelvis, pelvis from tilting. Flexed foot or floint, whichever is more comfortable. Feel opening in the hip, the knee. Keep the lengthening in the body and draw the arms down to cactus. Didn't think we were gonna do any shoulder, did you? Turn the head to the left. Turn the head to the right. Bring the head to neutral, slide the arms all the way down to the side of the body, release the flex of the foot and slide the heel back up. Realign if you need to, if you feel like you need to, you might feel longer on that one side. Now right, we're gonna do the left side. Slide the left leg out with a flexed foot. Take the arms overhead, lengthen in opposite directions. Don't let your pelvis tilt. Still feel the small of your back. Lift it off the floor slightly. Lengthening in the front of the hip flexors, which you may feel in your belly. You may feel in your back. You may feel all the way down to your knee. Keep the lengthening of the body and the leg and draw the arms back down to cactus. Make sure they're even, the elbows are even with the shoulders. Shoulders are down away from your ears. Turn your head right. And turn your head left. Bring your head back to neutral. Slowly bring your arms down around to the side. Slide your left heel in. Slide your right heel out. Bring your left knee up. Right hand on the outside edge of the left 
thigh, roll your hips together to the right, stack them on top of each other. Don't let the left one collapse over the right. Flex the left foot, straighten if you want to, you don't have to. Engage through the core. Breathe, keep, keep the hips stacked with the weight out away from the body. The hip may want to roll forward. Try and keep them stacked. Bend the knee, roll yourself back. Put on the floor, slide the left foot out, slide the right one in. Left hand on the outside of the thigh, roll to the left, stack the hips, which means you engage through the glutes, you engage through the low belly, through the pelvic floor, flex the top foot and straighten if you want to. You don't have to. It can be a little more difficult to keep stacked when you take the weight away from the midline of the body. Breathe. Bend your knee, roll your hips back. Bring your left knee in and roll a couple of times. And there's your Sarvasana. So find all your creature comforts, get yourself situated. Pillows, blankets, eye masks. Find your stillness, find your, your comfort. Everything is supported. Get in tune with your pelvis. Imagining that your pelvic floor is drooping into your back, right along with all the guts. Gravity's just letting everything droop to the back of the body. If you have your legs out straight, you may still feel some engagement through the pelvis. If you want to bend your knees or put their lower leg on a chair. If you bend your knees, let your knees rest together and your feet out so you're not trying to keep balanced. Or if you have your want to put your knees up over a pillow, bolster, cushion, just to give a little bit more uh, moment of relaxation. Unless you're extremely flexible in the front of your hips, having your legs out straight is going to make them engage. They won't relax. So reassess. Are you comfortable now? The pelvic floor relaxed. Your hip flexor relaxed. Let your mind relax. Keep your attention on your pelvis area, the muscles in the pelvic floor, all the pieces and parts that belong down there. the organs, 
the bones, the tendons, and the ligaments. Keeping a strong pelvic floor helps with our joint mobility and our hips. Helps the control of our sphincter muscles. Not only control when we take control of them, but the, the natural automatic control. So so urine just doesn't fall out of our body. It helps keep the organs in place when we exert pressure, whether that pressure be by lifting or pushing, pulling. The pelvic floor stabilizes the joints and the hips taking on a load, carrying heavy things. Let your pelvic floor relax. From your pelvic floor, let your belly relax. Let your low back relax. Trace the muscles of your low back all the way from the bottom all the way to the top. Relaxing to the back of your neck, through your shoulder blades. Your glutes. Relaxing the wall of your belly, the front and the side.